With the images of the Moria camp in flames still fresh in the mind, the European Commission's new pact for migration and asylum could not have been more timely. And its approach has tightened. Brussels proposes more controls, more repatriations, and to eliminate refugee quotas. The new immigration policy aims to leave behind the divisions between member states, but it continues to generate controversy. In our show, The Global Conversation, we have three guests representing three different visions. That of the countries that deal with arrivals, that of the countries reluctant to accept refugees, and that of the NGOs that are on the front line. MEPs will now be examining the new migration pact, and one of the people in church will be Miriam Dali, a socialist member from Malta, one of the countries on the front line for the arrival and reception of migrants. Miriam Dali, thank you for being with us on Euronews. Thank you. What is your impression of the Commission proposal as a whole? I have to be very honest with you, I'm cautious. I'm cautious because I would want to see how we are going to make sure that the things that uh, we are hearing from the Commission are actually passed into legislation, but then actually implemented. And uh, in your introduction, you said that members of the European Parliament will look into the details of this package. And you are so right, because, you know, they say the devil is in the detail. And it is the details that will make the difference. So let's, let's analyse uh, the different uh, proposals that are inside. The proposals wants to increase the return of economic migrants. Do you think that a country like yours, Malta, can deal with a process that is supposed to take a decision within 12 weeks? Let me speak about my country, but this is the experience of the frontline members as well. So um, what my country faces is a similar situation to what Italy faces, to what Spain faces, to what Greece um, faces. And uh, you are mentioning um, returns, but linked to that returns, there is also the screening process um, that has to be done. It is not really clear where the screening process is going to be done, but my understanding as things uh, stand today and from what I saw, is that this screening process will probably be the responsibility of the frontline members. So that will continue putting much more responsibility and much more weight on the frontline members. Something that myself and people who believe in solidarity think that this needs to be addressed and doesn't um, make sense in the sense that if we wanted to have solidarity and help the frontline members, we can't continue putting um, much more pressure or administra administrative pressure on them. Let's talk about uh, solidarity because uh, uh, the Commission wants it to be mandatory. No? Some countries will take uh, refugees and other countries will pay or will finance uh, the return of those uh, asylum seekers that have been rejected. Do you think that Solidarity can be forced. Solidarity is a principle of the European Union. So it should be taken as the natural step that all member states face this challenge together. Now, when we are linking relocation and returns, it is a step in the right direction. Because let's be very honest, we have countries until today who do not want to take um, on any responsibility whatsoever. And I believe that the European Commission made this proposal with this realisation in mind, that probably for these countries it would be um, far easier to sponsor returns. But I need to understand as well um, how this is going to work with alleviating um, problems at the frontline member states. There is another issue. Um, what if all member states go for sponsored um, returns, but they do not go for relocation? or the very little relocation we're experiencing today goes even further down. Let's talk about the origin and the transit countries. The European Union has already signed agreements with at least 20 countries, but this is not always working. How could this be improved? I'm a firm believer that we need to work with those countries. The European Commission is saying that it wants to address also the countries of origin to make sure that the problems um, in those countries from where migrants leave are addressed. I have been hearing this uh, for a very long time. I hope that there will be real strong proposals that can address that issue and also addressing the criminal networks. Um, if there is um, something which 
little has been done about, it is the criminal networks. Mm -hmm. But give me just one example of how we can deal better with these countries. I think we need to go into partnership with them, and I will go beyond just the policies that are related to migration. So we're speaking a lot um, about uh, having a greener economy. Why not extend this policy of greener economy outside the European Union mm -hmm. and look at non-EU countries as our partnership? as our partners. Mm -hmm. Economic partners that can help us also make sure that we can strengthen their economies um, as partners together with us and together we start dealing with the issue of migration. Mm -hmm. At this stage, the pact is a proposal. What changes, what concrete change would you like to see on it? So, for example, the pact speaks about a new coordinator for returns, but there is no EU coordinator for relocation. I would like to see that introduced to make sure that we give um, the same weight to relocation um, and returns. How we are going to make sure that the border screening does not put the responsibility only on the member states that are on the front line, but coming up with proposals that can make sure that all the countries um, pitch in uh, in, in this and making sure that it is not only the place of first arrival that have um, to deal uh, uh, with this. But do you have the, the impression that too many concessions have been done uh, to populists or to countries like Hungary or Poland uh, that were asking for tougher policies? Too many concessions have been done so far, we had proposals which tried not to give too many concessions. And as a citizen of a frontline member state, I can tell you that they didn't really work. I think what the Commission is trying to do, um, it is something that tries to bring together all the different member states. I, for one, am totally in favour of mandatory relocation, but it's not happening. We will now hear the views of another MEP, this time coming from Hungary. My guest is Balázs Hidvégi, member of the European Parliament from Hungary's ruling party Fidesz, who represents a firmly anti-migration government of Viktor Orbán here in Brussels. Uh, Mr. Hidvégi, what is your uh, first assessment of the new package of the European Commission? Well, the first assessment is that it uh, uh, seems to contain uh, some new elements that seem to be a step in the right direction. Uh, it underlines uh, a strict need to protect external borders. Uh, it does talk a lot about uh, returns of those people who have no right to stay in the European Union. On the other hand, it still talks about migration as something uh, desirable. It still talks about migration that is to be managed. Um, and something that is missing, I think, uh, from our perspective, our point of view, is a clear uh, standpoint that uh, people's requests uh, need to be managed or should be managed outside of the European Union instead of letting people in uh, uh, into EU territory and then getting uh, them uh, to all kinds of places, uh, sometimes, losing, uh, sometimes losing them uh, out of the, the eye of, of authorities. But you cannot simply stop migration into Europe. This is the reality. How could you stop completely migration, for example, at the sea border? Hungary has shown over the past five years that an external border can be protected, can be defended if there is a political will. We created, we constructed a border fence. We have increased uh, the border patrol, the police, the border guards are there. And, and that border is no longer a border that illegal migrants are crossing. Now, I know that a sea border is much more difficult, or it's a different type of border, but you know, it's not acceptable to say that a sea border, just because it's on the sea, is impossible to defend. Of course, it would be possible to defend it. Italy has shown it when uh, M uh, Mr. Salvini was uh, interior minister. Now, Prime Minister Viktor Orban has been fighting against the mandatory relocation quota since five years and these quotas are now out of the package. Is that a victory for you? To an extent it is, I think. Uh, Viktor Orban, the Prime Minister, was the first one uh, who said that this was not acceptable. Now, since this has not created a solution, this has not contributed to a common agreement, on the contrary, uh, the pushing of uh, 
uh, and, and, the, and the forcing of mandatory relocation just created deeper and deeper division within the EU, it is clear that that's not the way forward. So if this new pact on migration finally accepts that reality, that is a good development, and it's in, to an extent, yes, a victory of, of Viktor Orban. How would Hungary show solidarity towards Italy and Greece? Solidarity with the lack of border control? No. Solidarity with human smugglers and NGOs cooperating? No. Out of the question. Uh, the effective uh, protection of an external EU border is a way to show solidarity towards your fellow European members. And also in this new uh, proposal, they talk about return sponsorship. Now, as, as far as I understand the text and the proposal, uh, countries that uh, do not accept relocation of, of illegal migrants or migrants uh, can contribute to the joint effort by sponsoring and managing the, real, the, the return of people uh, who have no right to stay in Europe, who are not refugees and who need to leave but who haven't left over the past uh, couple of years. So I think we'll see in the negotiations, but uh, if that is something that we can contribute, contribute, I think we will. And what kind of help can Hungary offer to the people of Moria? I think that the people in these camps um, in Moria uh, and elsewhere, the people on the boats on the Mediterranean Sea, the people who are paying all what they have to human smugglers to try and come to Europe, they are victims. Uh, and we've, we have sympathy for those people, obviously. Uh, but as I said before, uh, they are victims because they have been given the wrong signals from the European Union. Many people think uh, in those areas, in Northern Africa, in the Middle East, that the only thing they have to do is to somehow get into European Union territory. And if they do that, then it's okay. Then they will be able to stay here uh, uh, as long as they want. And this has been the reality, actually, over the past five years. But that's wrong. Europe is not able uh, to welcome the whole world here in, in the European Union. This is against the will of the European people. And migration is something that, uh, uh, to, at the end of the day, must remain member state competency. But Hungary is not against accepting refugees who are gaining of the not. refugee of course status. Not. We, have been, uh, uh, we have been very clear about that. And those people who have a right uh, for refugee status got the refugee status in Hungary as well. That's not a debate. The debate really is about uh, illegal economic migration en masse. That's not acceptable. Uh, we, that's ha that has to, has to be stopped. Hungary has been heavily criticized for the treatment of refugees and migrants at the borders, at the transit zones. What is your reaction to this criticism? Um, I categorically reject any uh, opinion that uh, would be saying that it, would, it was uh, inhuman or not uh, respectful to, to the people or not, not correct. If in every way, it was a correct way uh, to have the people somewhere uh, during the time uh, uh, that their requests were, were treated. Uh, the Migration Pact also now talks about the need to accelerate the time uh, and the decision about uh, those kind of requests. Uh, we'll see if it's going to be possible. Our preference would be, similarly to what the Hungarian transit zone was, uh, to have hotspots outside of EU territory so that people can know for sure and with certainty, with clarity, whether or not they have a right to come to Europe or not. In Europe, there are people who know migration well because they followed it very closely. The proactive open arms agencies rescued thousands of migrants on the high seas, and it spent countless hours waiting for a European port to authorize its landings. Its founder and director is with us to give his point of view. Oscar Camps, thanks for joining us. Hello, good afternoon. The European Commission has presented a pact for migration and asylum. What do you think about it? Can it make a difference? It doesn't seem a good start at all because it formalizes the existing xenophobic policies. It outsources the responsibility, especially in the detention centers in Libyan territory. This proposal talks about enhancing deportations, but it doesn't talk about reinforcing the humanitarian rescues at all.
In fact, the Commissioner for the Interior, Elva Johansson, did make a mention of rescue operations. She said she hopes there will be less ships like yours in the Mediterranean. She thinks it will no longer be necessary because the new measures will play a deterrent role so that migrants will stop coming to Europe because they know that they'll be expelled. Do you think it's realistic? I wish that it weren't necessary for us to be in the sea. Neither us, nor the other NGOs, or any other humanitarian ship, because that would mean that the European Union's taken charge of the rescue operations on its own, by either a military mission or a civilian mission, or even by the European Coast Guard. As long as this is not the case, it's evident that they will have to tolerate our presence as observers and as witnesses of what's really happening, and how the international conventions on human rights and the international maritime laws are being violated, not only by Malta, but also by the so-called Libyan Coast Guard. The Commission also proposes to assume the responsibility of the coordination of the rescue operations to ensure that disembarkments are better prepared. What do you think of this proposal? Well, during 2016 and 2017, all rescue operations were coordinated by the Italian Coast Guard and sometimes by Frontex. Both agencies coordinated the disembarkment and the transfer of the migrants from the ships of the humanitarian organizations to official ships. Disembarkments were all coordinated and there was some order. And coincidentally, as of March 2018, after the elections in Italy, all this changed. Now, no one coordinates the rescues, neither humanitarian actions nor the landings. Everything has become a nightmare because of the waiting and the prolonged suffering of the people who are being rescued in the sea. If these measures could contribute to accelerate the obtaining of a safe port to disembark, to ensure these people people are attended to immediately, then that would be welcome. What do you think about the agreements with third countries? Do they work? Do you think they're viable? With which countries is it possible to negotiate, for example, in Africa? I have many doubts about the idea of outsourcing. We have other points of view. We think the solution is at the point of origin. Now, we need safe countries where citizens feel safe. That will obviously avoid many migratory flows. If we stop conflicts, we will also stop a large part of the migratory flows. Outsourcing borders, paying third countries to do the dirty work, paying Libya to have illegal detention centres where torture, extortion and violations of all rights are practised does not seem like a good solution to me. A few years ago, NGOs like yours were considered as guardian angels. There was a positive image. Instead, now there's a tendency to label you as criminals. In fact, your organization and also some of your crew members even got into trouble with the law. What has happened? Well, we've gone from being highly respected European citizens to being persecuted, prosecuted, extorted, kidnapped, shot or threatened in international waters. And everything is obviously a smear campaign. Because from a judicial point of view, nothing can be done. We are simply respecting the international conventions and respecting the maritime law. Just drawing a conclusion, the pact that's been presented in Brussels is a proposal that still has to be debated before being approved in Parliament and by member states. What should be changed in this text? I would remind the President of the European Commission of the words of her own speech that rescue at sea is not optional. But in the text of the proposal, she then has very few lines about humanitarian rescue. Obviously, those 30,000 deaths that we have had in the last five years should be taken into consideration. Clearly, we need a rescue operation like the ones we had in 2014. Oscar Camps, Director of Open Arms NGO, thanks for being with us. Gracias a vosotros.